Making fun of someone with a disability is retarded. boys time for something exciting a brand that i truly love ace beam i was finally able to get a hold of kind of what is their highest profile almost holy grail of lights the terminator m1 yeah it's expensive for a production light it's a non-custom light Custom lights, you know, you're going to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on. But for a production light, this is expensive. And yeah, while it's big and bulky, <laughs> there's no getting around that. Compared to normal lights, it is. It's big and it's bulky. But it's actually compact for what it is and everything that it does. You have a nice, powerful LED light combined with a crazy throwing LEP and one palm-sized unit. And what a unit it is. Let's uh, go through what's in the packaging very quickly. As a matter of fact, I'm going to speed things up and get through this as quickly as possible. This is my least favorite part of doing any review. Let's check it out. Okay, now that we have the prerequisite nonsense out of the way, let's get into the light. First off, this is going to be powered by a single 21700 battery. Please do keep in mind, you don't want to charge this in a charging bay because it has a USB slot. So you just plug in your USB to USB-C directly into there, which I just realized, by the way, and I apologize, I've taken mine out of the packaging. So it wasn't included in that little packaging speed run there but it does come with a USB to USB-C cable, so don't worry about that. Now, most people are going to prefer having the removable battery. Some people that are spoiled by lights that only have internal batteries are going to be like, oh, I don't want to take it out. No, I want to charge it up separately. It's actually much better because a proprietary or built-in non-serviceable battery means whenever that battery reaches the end of its life, the light is garbage. That's it. You throw the whole investment away or throw away what may end up being one of your favorite lights because you can't replace a $10 battery. It's ridiculous. Here, you can keep fresh batteries on charge, rotate through them very, very quickly and bring spares with you. If this were an internalized battery, then you would have to bring a power bank with you if you're going out for a long period of time beyond what that battery is capable of running and recharge it there. And the recharge on something like this on a 21700 is a few hours. So not fun. So yeah, I like the fact that it is a removable battery. The construction quality of this light is great. 
and it's worthy of the lofty $300 price. The threading on this tail cap is clean and smooth, and it's pre-lubricated as all things should be. The heat sinks that are built in here work very, very well. It really doesn't get too hot. I mean, holding it even up there when it's running on turbo, it doesn't get all that hot. But even when it does get warm, it doesn't get hot back where you're holding it. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna one hand this with your right hand, you're holding it like this, and you're probably just gonna back off a little bit. You're gonna be holding the LEP bezel and the switch housing more than anything else. You're probably not gonna be making a lot of contact with this area. And this rotating bezel here seems to dissipate the heat well from the LEP as well. So it's really not a burden to use. It's actually really, really nice. Now let's talk about how this thing operates. You're going to have a power switch and a mode switch that switches you back between LEP and LED. This switch is inactive. It has no power until you turn this on. Now that I have this turned on, I can switch back and forth between LEP and LED as often as I'd like. This is also going to be your brightness level. So you're going to hold this down. Let's get all the way down. Okay. So this is going to be the, the low mode, which is 30 lumens. Medium one which is 90 lumens, which is actually really good for indoors and, I don't know, a small area like you're going out in your backyard or something. Maybe uh, you don't feel like walking your dog around the neighborhood. You're just taking it out in the backyard. That'll work. Then you've got a high of 700, which is good for pretty much almost anything. Walking a path, walking through the woods, walking the dog through the neighborhood, that kind of thing. You're going to light up the area around you pretty well. No issues whatsoever. And then you've got the turbo, which is, I've gotten conflicting numbers. I've seen some people talk about it as low as 2,300 lumens. However, on the Ace Beam website, they're saying 3,500 lumens. And that's not too bad. Now, when we talk about LEP mode, we can switch it over here. And this is easily adjustable with one hand from wide to focused. And this is really going to be dependent on the distance that you're using it at. I think they said something like under 30 meters, you want to have it as wide as possible. That way it's a little bit more, I don't know, useful. And then when you're out Far distances, you're going to be super focused. I like the tension that's on that bezel. I can do this very easily with one hand, and it's not so loose that it just kind of goes from one to the other. There is a nice degree of tension on it. feels really good. There's something about the tactility of it that I really enjoy, and the knurling on the bezel is very effective. My fingers have not slipped off of it yet. Now, if you're not familiar with LEP technology, it's only a little different from LEDs. LEP is laser excited phosphor. All of these technologies, I guess is a good way to put it, are dependent upon the phosphors within that device. I'm grasping at words here. And you're dealing with exciting the phosphors. Normally, it's going to be, if there's enough room in the light, it's at an angle. It hits and then it bounces through. This, and I don't know if you can quite see it on camera when I've got it dialed in, you can see the emitter back there. It's going to be shining right through. And it's got a very thick magnified lens. So yeah, think of a, uh, a magnifying glass, and that's pretty much what you've got here. And then it changes its focal length depending on where you're twisting this. Now, LEP is a cool and high-tech, as well as fun, way to show off, but it's just not as practical as an LED. That's just the way that I see it. Can your eyes even see anything a mile away? Not too well, I imagine, but 
honestly, it doesn't matter if you can light up something that's a mile or more away if you can't see it anyway. It's also too small of a focal point to really see anything. But like a laser pointer, it's fun just to hit something ridiculously far away, whether or not it does anything to benefit um, you. You can't walk a path with an LEP, even with it adjusted all the way open wide, because it's got a ridiculous hard cutoff. Let me go ahead and turn the LEP back on. I mean, there is no spill. You go from the hot spot to absolute cutoff, nothing. This will be pure blackness from here to infinity. So it really doesn't do a lot of good for you. About 60% of your, of your point of view is in the dark. So up close, it just really isn't usable. Now that's not this light, that's LEP in general. Now the LED head on this puppy is nice. And if this were a standalone LED light, it would be competing with a lot of lights on the market that honestly have more performance. I mean, that's just the way it is. A high of 700 lumens isn't really all that impressive. And the 3,500 millimeter turbo, which is still respectable, it's definitely good, but I've got lights that are a third of the size of this part of the unit that have... 4,000 lumen capabilities. This, this little guy right here, this is a uh, LD70 by Imolent. This is a 4,000 lumen light. And look at the size comparison just against the LED portion of this light. Significantly smaller. Now, it's not going to run nearly as long with its internal battery versus a 21700. It's not going to sustain the 4000 lumens for nearly as long as this will, the 3500 lumens, because of the heat sinks and how effective they are. This is going to build up heat a lot more quickly and cut off, I think it was right around 30 seconds. Meanwhile, I can get a little over two minutes of the 3500 lumen turbo out of this because it's not hitting that critical point of temperature where it feels the need to drop back. And it's actually got pretty damn decent throw. So it really does a good job. While each light individually by itself isn't the gold standard of either one as a package together, it's awesome. And you kind of feel like you're dominating the dark. I went out with this and when I was going to do the beam shots and I had four other lights with me that I was also going to be doing the beam shot testing on. And I played with this thing and I had a whole bunch of fun with it. And it felt like I was opening a curtain in the dark. It just destroyed the darkness around me. And then when I wanted to play, you know, kind of superhero with it and shoot it far out, there was nothing else in my arsenal that night that would come anywhere close to how far this LEP beam threw. It was ridiculous. Now, one thing I should mention is the LED portion does in fact have a moonlight mode but it's it's not an automatic normal thing. What you have to do is while the light is off, you have to press and hold to access it. So that's going to give you a half lumen moonlight, which in my opinion is perfect. Between half a lumen and one lumen for me is perfect. So if the light is on, the lowest I can go is the low of 30 lumens. So when it's off, press and hold. Now I've got my moonlight. That's how that works. And yes, you do have different, I'm sorry, different strengths on the LEP as well. And there is a turbo on the LEP. I like that it's just in, in this one brick. Now, people are going to find different ways to hold it to be comfortable. 
I'm fortunate that I have very large hands, so I can hold this, and my fingers actually can wrap all the way around to this uh, indent in between the, the battery tube and the LEP. But if I hold it just right, and if I can remember, because you know your fingers aren't used to doing this, I have to remember that my ring finger is going to be the power switch, and that my middle finger is going to be the mode switch to go between LEP and LED. So the way that you can look at it is this. If you're trying to figure out the ergonomics of it, if you're walking and you're going to carry a light like this, you know, let's say you're, you're doing this, you, you're more of an EDC style light person where there's a switch here instead of a tactical light person where you have a tail switch and you're used to holding it like that, you can do that and you can still control the light with your fingers down here. Otherwise, if you are a tactical kind of dude, you're gonna switch it up, and instead of having your thumb back here on the tail, you're just gonna have your thumb writing here. And the side of your knuckle, by the way, works perfectly fine to activate all of these switches. So you do have an easy way of holding this once you get used to it. The first day I got this, I was like, oh, it's so cumbersome. How am I supposed to hold this? And the whole thing is slick except for the knurled bezel. So you're like, oh, what am I going to do? What I'm going to end up doing is putting the factory lanyard on here, which now, as I realize, is also something I didn't show you in the, the packaging. I'm sorry about that. It actually comes with a nice adjustable wrist lanyard, for the investment that you've got here, as slick as this is, I, I don't really want to risk dropping it on the concrete or something and having to replace a $300 light. It's just not my idea of fun. Now, let's get into the specs of this thing so you get an idea. You can measure your own hand if you want to. Uh, the length is 4.09 inches with a width of 1. Point, I'm sorry, this is the width, 1.39 inches. And a height, which I guess is what they're calling this way. Wait, hold on a second. Length, 4.09 inches. A width of 1.39. That's probably going to be at the, uh, the rotating bezel head. And height of 2.5 inches. What are you guys calling height? Length, width, which I would just call thickness. Anyway, the third measurement from their website is two and a half inches. You figure out what it is. And the weight is 8.20 ounces, excluding the battery. And here's the thing, man. When you put that 21700 inside, it is 10.7 ounces. This is a backpack light. This is not a carry it in the pocket. It will fit in your front pocket like a thick wallet will. But this is not an EDC light by any stretch of the imagination. This is your badass show off to your buddies. And if you're going camping, this is the light you're going to take. Because I guarantee you, most any of your buddies carrying a light isn't going to have anything that performs like this on either side. And you've got both. You've got the powerhouse in your hand. You're going to love it. Now, as far as the emitters go... The, the ones that I went with, I chose the Cool White 6500K, not because I knew this was not going to be a practical EDC light. This is going to be a, hey, look what I can do light. So I wanted the one that appeared to be the brightest and most piercing. So I went 6500K, which I typically don't do. I like warmer emitters, but they're unnamed. They don't list what these emitters are. But you do have the option of a high CRI Nichia 519A at 5,000K. So you can get the triple emitters in the Nichias and have that high CRI, have that better depth perception. I wanted, hey, look at me, look what I can do, look how terribly stupid my light is, how incredibly bright it is. That's what I went with. If this were more of a, I'm going to take it with me all the time kind of light, I'd go for something a bit warmer, which is evidenced in uh, the light that I carry most often, which is my Raylite Lanapple. 
definitely a lot warmer than this. So that's it in a nutshell. We're going to go outside. We're going to take it out on the water. Which, by the way, if, if you are going out with your buddies fishing or, you, or for any reason end up on the water at night, you're really going to love this thing. Your bros are going to be super jealous and they're immediately going to go home and they're going to buy one of these for themselves because they're going to see that performance and go, oh my God, that thing is lighting up things that I can't even see. It's so far away. Yep. <laughs> That's what it does. It's absolutely redonkulous. And so much damn fun. All right, before we go outside, I think I actually want to show you kind of the close-up beam shots here against the uh, the whiteboard and give you an idea of the beam pattern and what it looks like when you're up close. So starting with the LED, actually we could point this down just a hair as well. There we go. So there it is on high. So as you see, there's no defined hot spot because it is diffused pretty well. But it is definitely a bright center and then a very soft spill. And it's got a medium cutoff uh, up close. Now at a distance, it's going to be a little bit sharper, a little bit harsher, but it's, it's still not crazy. When you switch over to LEP, you realize, oh man, yeah, everything that's not in that dot, by the way, will be black if you're outdoors at night. You're just not going to see anything. Now, if you're walking around, yes, you, you can use this, but this is a spotlight. It's really what it is. You're going to light up that immediate area and everything from here outside to infinity is dark. Period. That's just the way it is. Switching back again. And you see what a big difference that makes. You're like, oh yeah, now I can see everything. And, you know, we can make it more interesting by turning off the studio lights. This, by the way, is the widest. Here you have the narrowest. So here is the widest. And as we switch... You see, I can see everything around me. That's a big difference right there that you can easily see. All right, so let's take this bad boy outside and see what she's all about. All right, let's get this monster kicked on. And this does have memory, so whatever mode was selected previously before it was turned off, it will default back to that. So I'm going to need to kick this down. There we go, low, medium, one, medium, two, and high. So now you get a chance to see the beam as it's coming down over the camera, and you get to see the entire area that's illuminated. So the LED portion really does give you a nice, floody light. It's going to be super easy to see everything that's around you. And there it is. When you flip over to LEP, it's, it's like looking at an eclipse. You see this laser beam of white light going out in front of you in this teeny tiny spot of light. And yeah, if your eyes are really good and you can see that kind of distance, you'll see what that little dot is illuminating. But is it really doing you any good? Well... Let's get back to something a little bit more practical. I'm going to go ahead and take a walk down to the end of the dock here and use just the LED portion so that you can see what I'm seeing and you see just how useless LEP is when I do a quick flash over to it. But it is great for stretching out and looking, uh, looking around you at a distance, but anything that's going to be close enough to cause you any issues, you're going to want to use that flood to illuminate the entire area. So good performance out of the LED portion, out of the flood portion. Really like how it works. But again, I, I have to go back and honestly say, if that's all you're going to be using it for, for practical purposes, you can get into a smaller form factor and get more power. 
than what this light is going to give you. Now, when you really want to be crazy, that's what the LEP is for. It may not be easily observable from the distance, but there you can see me. There I am. And I'm trying to use the LEP to walk, and I just can't. I honestly, <laughs> I was afraid I was going to fall into this disgusting water. Activated stroll by accident there. So yeah, it's a, a thrill a minute if you want to walk down a narrow dock using just the LEP. You better have the confidence of a Jedi and use the Force to be able to make your way through it. But as you see, the LEDs are plenty bright and give you plenty of coverage in pretty much every direction. All right, let's take this out together. You'll walk with me down to the end of the dock and you'll see what I'm seeing in real time. Again, using the LEDs, I'm on high right now so you get a chance to see everything. And you don't really even feel the need to go to turbo often. There is turbo if you wanna do it. And it just takes what you're already seeing and intensifies it. So if you're worried about the turbo being short term and kicking down quickly, just know that using high, you're getting a lot of performance out of it. And there is that lightsaber like action of the LEP close up. It just, it's just comical. Even when you open up the iris all the way, it's just, it's just not doing you a lot of good close up. There it is back to the LEDs much easier to use and you feel like you've got a lot more confidence with your surroundings by using that but there are just times you want to go hey what's going on over there surprisingly enough the led flood section is going nicely into the tree line over there but yep there it is there's the lep now the test for me is i have not yet used a light that was able to illuminate any part of the house over here. And here, it's, it's like it's not an issue at all. Now, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of yards away. Zooming in and out, give you a better idea of how far away this really is. And I could see all the way up into the trees. Going back across here toward the, uh, toward the road. Again, illuminating up in the trees very well. If I was looking for one specific thing and I knew generally where it should be, that little tiny spotlight's going to do me a lot of good. But I just, I'm just so used to having a larger, I guess, diameter. It would be the best way to put it. A larger diameter of light in which to see things. But the concentration of power, that candela that you've got right there in that spotlight is impressive. I mean, look how bright everything is. It's not like it's dimly lit and you're having a hard time seeing. Even five, six hundred yards away, things are crazy, crazy bright. And now we're back to the LED as we're going to walk back up. Those trees are a good 30 yards away and I can see into them very, very well. If I were camping and I heard a noise out in those, those trees over there and I was wondering if it was a, a bear or a raccoon or a wolf, I could, don't need to go to the LEP. I can use the LEDs and it will light up that whole area very easily and give me a lot of useful light. So that's your comparison between the two, the practicality between the two. And if you're looking at buying an LEP light, this is probably one of your best ways of going because you don't just have an LEP. You'll be experiencing it. And if it's not something that you love, you've still got a very useful LED light attached to it. And I think that's a really good way of looking at this. Now for a little bit of fun, I noticed the houses that were on the other side of the trees there. A little over a block away, I figured I'd try and focus on that and see how that lights up. If you want to see more high-performance lights, subscribe and come back. I got more coming. Thank you as always for joining me, and I'll see you next time.